So I don't know about you, but I really love the kind of videos where there are pros and cons that are ranked, and then finally there's a verdict to determine a winner. In this case, we are ranking the pros and cons of selling on Etsy. We are going to dive deep into the pros and cons of selling on Etsy, and of course, whether or not selling on Etsy is even worth it at all. If you're new to making money online or you want to work from home and you have no experience, should you even waste your time trying to sell on Etsy or should you just give up now? And of course, if you're already selling on Etsy and maybe going through a slump, should you quit? Will Etsy win or will Etsy lose? The results may surprise you, so definitely stay tuned. So before we dive in, please feel free to chime in whether you think Etsy should win or lose this competition. And then of course, we can see if our predictions align by the end of the video. Now, no skipping to the end to find out the winner. That just takes all the fun right out of it. Now let's start with the pros of selling on Etsy. I mean, who doesn't want to hear the good news first? Well, of course, as you probably know, Etsy is a huge marketplace for handmade, vintage, and craft supply sellers, and Etsy has spent many years establishing a base of trust among shoppers, especially women, who come to browse and to purchase on Etsy every single month. Etsy definitely has a loyal customer base who come to browse on the platform to look for things they don't even know that they need yet, but they love the buying experience and in turn the trust and security that Etsy aims to provide. Speaking of trust, and if you do sell on Etsy, there are many aspects of running an e-commerce store that Etsy takes care for you on your behalf. Etsy collects funds from the buyer and sends them to you. If you are selling on an e-commerce website like Shopify, you do have to be concerned about high risk or fraudulent shoppers as you can soon be without the item you ship to them and the funds. Of course, this can happen on Etsy too, but in most ways, Etsy takes care of this for you. And the other big, huge thing that Etsy takes care of for most Etsy shops, and of course this depends on where you live and where your items are shipping to, but in many cases, Etsy takes care of collecting and remitting sales tax on your behalf. So for example, if the customer is in California Etsy collects and remits California sales tax to the California tax authorities. Now, of course, like everything, there are always a few exceptions. So do your due diligence depending on where you live and where you plan to sell to. Now, whether you've noticed or not, we are on to the third pro about selling on Etsy. And that is that Etsy has many stylistic features built into it so you don't have to think about it. Let's say, for example, you want to run a sale for one single day on your Etsy shop. Then you simply go into your shop manager, then into marketing, then you click on sales and discounts and you can add a discount or a temporary sale pretty easily. On many other e-commerce platforms, you have to add all kinds of apps. You have to pay for on a monthly basis, or you have to come up with some sort of workaround just to do basic functions that are already provided within Etsy. You also don't have to decide which font and colors to use for all of your shopping cart buttons and menus, and even things like what size the photos should appear to your customers. These are things that Etsy simply takes care of for you and might not seem like a big deal right now, but if and when you do decide to sell on another platform, all of these little tweaks can certainly add up and eat up a lot of the time you need just to get started when all you want to do is sell. Now the fourth and final pro about selling on Etsy is that you can make a lot of money super quickly if your shop goes viral. And this can happen if you are able to align an item or niche in your shop with something that's trending. For example, if there's something that happens in the world or in politics that fits with an item you already have in your shop, or if you're able to quickly create one, you stand the possibility to gain a lot of sales super quick just from 
people frantically searching this item. Whereas if you're selling something like this elsewhere, then you might have to wait until your social media post gets picked up or your social media ads start working. Whereas on a platform like Etsy, customers are already searching for trending items. And if you sell print on demand items, you also get to set your prices in entirety. So you stand the possibility to make quite a bit more than if you're selling on a print on demand platform where you only get to keep the profits. Okay, so we've talked quite a bit about the pros of selling on Etsy. And of course they probably sound pretty darn amazing, but in many ways, it's not always all it's cracked up to be, is it? Now, of course, the biggest complaint anyone hears anywhere are the enormous fees that Etsy takes, especially as Etsy has indicated they are planning on adding additional support for sellers, and they've already added a chat feature on the app and the website for star sellers. However, there are many layers of fees which can be tricky to figure out and to navigate. First of all, you have your Etsy listing fee, which is 20 cents per item for every listing you add to the platform. And again, your shop is charged this fee every time a single item sells from a listing. So even though it's a small flat fee, because it's only good for a few months unless your item sells, you have to pay that fee again even though you've never even sold the item. However, the other fees on Etsy are a percentage. So even if you raise your prices, then the fee to Etsy is also higher as well. There are two additional fees and one is a transaction fee of six and a half percent. The other fee is a processing fee of 3% plus 25 cents US. Both of these fees are charged on the item total. However, there are additional deductions you'll see from your Etsy account. Some of these are taxes that Etsy has charged to the customer. So you technically don't receive those as Etsy collects and remits those. To help me keep track of how much Etsy charges, I just assume it's going to be at least 10% of the item total before you pay for any additional advertising costs. And that's if you choose to do ads on Etsy directly, which you can choose not to do. But then there's also Etsy offsite ads, which you have zero control over at all. These offsite ad fees range from 12% in addition to the 10%. And that's 12% if you were grandfathered into the program or 15% as a newer seller. So if your profit margin isn't very high to begin with, and the item maybe isn't priced correctly because you're not sure, then yes, your fees can definitely eat up all of your sales. Now for our second con about selling on Etsy. Now, sure, there are people making sales on Etsy all the time, but is it simply too saturated for someone who's new and aren't all the customers just totally crazy? Well, perhaps, but if you aren't exactly sure what you're going to sell yet or currently have more generic item, maybe just aren't sure how to sell them in a unique way, or maybe there are still enough people searching for that item, then it might really feel like Etsy is too saturated. However, that's unless you can find a breakthrough or unique item with a unique selling point or idea. So for example, if you look at something like the search term bachelorette on erank.com, and not affiliated by the way, it does say that there are over 13,000 searches every month for Bachelorette, but there's also 413,000 listings on Etsy using the word Bachelorette. So you're probably going to have to be pretty creative if that's the niche you want to break into. As for the crazy customers on Etsy, yes, they do tend to target newer sellers on Etsy if they are a little bit more more of a scammy customer. Yes, unfortunately, there tend to be scammier customers that try to take advantage, especially of newer Etsy shops. But after over 36,000 sales on Etsy, I would say that the majority of people are pretty reasonable. Now the third con to selling on Etsy is that we have to deal with shops that are selling overtly trademarked items that never seem to be taken down despite the fact that they're probably stealing and breaking the law. There are also those that will completely copy and essentially try to steal your listings, your designs, your photos, and all of your keywords and tags exactly. 
Of course, having dealt with this myself, it's not exactly fun. Yeah, it is stealing. It's not slightly inspired by Disney when it says Disney on it with Mickey Mouse ears. And yeah, sure, Disney is an enormous company making billions and billions of dollars, but that also means that they have billions and billions of dollars to sue online sellers. Not to say that this is a drawback of selling on Etsy, but there are shops that receive many sales for selling these types of trademarked items when they clearly don't have permission or licensing from the company, but then they'll also overtly steal one of your photos or design and sell that alongside these trademarked items too. Customers can then easily add it to their order with one of these other overtly trademarked items because those are super easily popular and highly in demand. And frankly, this is a disappointing and darker side of selling online and selling on Etsy. Now the fourth and final con to selling on Etsy is that ultimately you're selling on somebody else's platform. It's Etsy's platform and Etsy can do whatever it wants whenever it wants. Essentially, your shop and your livelihood are at the whim of Etsy. If Etsy receives too many cases or poor reviews for your shop, legitimate or not, they can simply hang on to your funds until they choose to release them, making it super difficult and hard for you to continue to pay for the items you are sending out that you need to ship to your customers that are still purchasing. Tomorrow, Etsy might decide that the photos in your shop are no longer the correct size and not show them to customers anymore. Etsy can do whatever it wants. Truthfully, Etsy can do anything it wants. And like some other YouTubers have said, Etsy could be compared to a bad or demanding boyfriend. You are basically a slave to try to do what Etsy wants, if you want to look at it that way. Whether that's updating your keywords, adding videos, or even if Etsy Etsy gives preference to shops that get customers to come shop on Etsy from social media websites, or even if you feel like you need to sell your items for less and less and less until you feel like you're not even making money anymore, well, that's the way it is. So will I decide that it's worth it to sell on Etsy and do the pros outweigh the cons? Well, if I had to start selling on Etsy today, without any previous reviews or customers, then yes, I would probably still choose to sell on Etsy because there's a lot fewer things to have to think about just to get started. And yes, it probably is because I already know and understand how the platform works. And sure, I know how to replicate my success in new and different ways. However, if I were to recommend Etsy, I'd say don't start until you have at least a couple unique ideas that maybe no one or not many other people have within a specific niche. Maybe there's a new summer fad or a quote that you've thought of or something that maybe you personally understand well. So start to do your research like it seems you already are and start to learn more about the Etsy algorithm and what sells and why. Start to learn about the little nuances of Etsy, like how to add a banner to your shop and the types of ways you can persuade buyers to purchase from your Etsy shop so that your Etsy shop can be successful despite all of the fees and competition. Should you open an Etsy shop, Yes, absolutely. But spend some time searching to see if what you think will sell will actually sell. Is it even something anybody wants or is looking for? If not, you're going to have to figure out how to market it to customers and maybe even start to figure out why some items sell on Etsy amazingly well despite a higher price point and others simply do not sell at all. To help you figure out the mindset of what to sell on Etsy, you should definitely check out my video on how to make money on Etsy, even if I had to start over from zero sales. I wish you all the very best of success in building your Etsy shop for today, tomorrow, and for well into the future. See you later, superstar.